there's an example. Ten years ago, exactly, um, there was a senora, prime minister, and he was fighting Hezbollah. He wanted them to disarm. I mean, how you want to get rid of yes. these, these practical things? I guess mean, yes. it's dangerous, at least. It was very clear, and everybody were watching, that there will be changes coming up in the, in the region after 2006, okay? Mm -hmm. Everybody knew that there will be the so-called the Arab Spring was being prepared, and, you know, and we've seen it happening and rising in some other areas. Why Lebanon does not have a, uh, an Arab Spring? Because we, don't, we are not revolutionary people. The stamina since 1975, being a citizen, is gone. A lot of our youth, they believe in leaving the country. They would like to get a visa to go and work outside. In the old days, this was not a problem because, you know, 60% of our people are under the age of 30, okay? In the old days, our economy can generate between 12 to 14,000 jobs every year if it, is, it was on the 6 to 8% growth that would have, you know, in the, in the early 90s. But what we used to do, because our quality of education was higher than the Gulf. We used to send our engineers, our doctors, our lawyers to the Gulf to work there because they needed them. What happened over the last 30 years? Our quality of education stayed the same, and the Gulf are investing into better universities and better education. And now they have a very high uh, uh, rate of educated people, and they have the unemployment there. So for us, <coughs> what happened is that and the, to try to change it in the old days, in the, you know, in the, in the senora days, uh, none of us could see an end to the regional problem because we all knew, and you remember in 2004, when, uh, when uh, uh, Colin Powell attempted to come to Syria to try to convince Bashar al-Assad to start the dialogue with Israel, then basically after that the whole thing went out of control mm -hmm. when they when invaded Jerusalem and they, uh, sorry, invaded Gaza and invaded Lebanon in 2006. At that time, any settlement would have been practically impossible. So you, everybody bought time, okay? And Senora, as much as it's a statement, he, he read it right, and so basically he rode the wave by being anti-Iran, anti-Hezbollah, but doing very little about it, okay? Now, what's happening in Iraq after these elections, whereby we see that there is a formula for coexistence between the Americans and the Iranians to try to keep the whole thing, you know, balanced. When you see that the Iraqis have agreed under pressure from Turkey to try to stop the Kurds to be passing by. So it means there is now some kind of a modus vivendi in Iraq. Not ideal, but it's more. And the reason why Abadi will be the prime minister because he's the weakest link and he's willing to play this role between both. If this one happens, okay, as much as we hear a lot of words about, you know, Obama, uh, sorry, Trump pulling out of Syria, we know this is a lot of, uh, we've heard that with Obama pulling out of Iraq. Okay, and he returned. So my belief is that now Trump is negotiating who will pay the price you know, for this involvement that's going to take place. My suggestion is that uh, within, before the 2020, the Arab-Israeli conflict will never be solved, at least not in the formula that's being proposed. So as far as we're concerned, we're going to be seeing a uh, more of a Syrian type settling of, of, of this, uh, you know, of this uh, military dispute and with al Ghuta practically East Ghouta falling, it means now the Syrian regime is more comfortable, okay, at least in its own so-called, its own controlled area, mm -hmm. which means that sooner or later pressure is going to start on Iran to try to define the red line is going to be operating within the, within the Syrian, uh, you know, territories. By default, Hezbollah will have to reposition itself.